Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to come together. Holy Spirit, you go work tonight. You help us and show us when we unveil Jesus to us. Open our eyes to see him. Help us to renew our minds so that we walk in more and more of who we are in him. That it will shine outwardly to everybody else. That our relationships that we have here on earth are impacted in a big way. And that everybody that's around us breathes and touch, is touched by God, right? And we want that in the name of Jesus because we want to be your church that affects the world. And we want that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, last week we talked about what the complications, the complication of loving God, right? We talked about the vertical, right? So today, or tonight, we get it going, our vertical affects all horizontal. I like this because I think so much in our lives, how often in our lives we try so hard to do what? Better our relationships with people, right? I don't know about you. Sometimes you feel like a horrible friend, and you're like, I need to be a better friend, right? And you try to be a better friend. How so often that fails miserably, right? It starts off awesome, right? You're like connecting, you're doing the things, and all of a sudden you kind of stop, and you start to pull back, and you come back in, right? And you're like, I'm a horrible friend, and I come back out, and, ah, and it does the same effect again, right? And we try so hard, well, we need to love more in our relationships. We need to do this. We need to be there. We need to do this, right? Now, this goes beyond just friendships, obviously. It goes with every type of relationship that you can ever possibly have. That means sons and daughters to their fathers and mothers, fathers and mothers to their sons and daughters, to, to your husbands and wives, to every single thing, right? Business relationships. Everything, right? We try so hard, and we fail miserably. And we, we put our focus on our horizontal. So much. What is that really? Our doing. What are we really doing? We say, I need to be a better friend. I'm like, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there for you. I'm gonna, and then all of a sudden they call you and they start to lay out what? I got my issues, and they start to lay out their issues on you like oh. my way, my watch is broken, so I'm like, ah, please. Can you just make it stop? Shut up, please. Like I I, I wanna do something else. I wanna do something that's more worth my time. Right? We felt this way because it's our own effort that's coming out, right? And we, we learned that last week. We put our own effort in trying to love God and we fall miserably. Well, when we look at each other, we try to do stuff for each other, we do stuff a lot of times in our own efforts and it falls flat, right? It's always, I can tell you, it always starts off great, but it always ends miserably, right? If, we, if we're truthful, we'll realize that, right? So, I'm going to tell you right now, our our focus should always be on our vertical and not our horizontal. I know that sounds weird. We want better or horizontal. But God says, let's just focus on your vertical. The horizontal will be a fruit. Right? Now, this is awesome to think about too. How your relationship is with your vertical is always going to be shown outwardly to everyone to see through your horizontal. Now, I'm not trying to condemn anybody, but you can see this. I'm not condemning. You can see that so much. When somebody is surface level with their friends always, behind closed doors with God, they're surface level with him too. If they're wearing masks with their friends, they're wearing their masks with God. It's always whatever they have with God comes out with people. Now, I'm not trying to be somebody else, especially if somebody who got saved or who got a revelation. It takes time for what? Fruit to come out. So, when you look at somebody over time, and the fruit is not there, then we know the fact that this isn't right. I'm not trying to be anybody else. So, I want you tonight to maybe say, okay, well, maybe I just need to work on this. And I say, ding, 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 ding. Right? We're going to look at that. But it is so true, and I, I've noticed that over time with a lot of people, when how they treat you is how they treat, they're treating God. Because if you understand how God loves you, it becomes your byproduct out of you to your friends and the people around you, right? So, I was looking around, and I thought I had some great sermons, some great stuff, and God goes, you're going here. And I said, oh, diggity dog, yes, I said diggity dog. Yes, we're going here. 
And we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to read the whole time of the chapter of Colossians 3. Because did you know this, this thing is so chock full of your horizontal relationship? And we, we see that. There's a lot of stuff in here about your horizontal. But what you, we made, we always tend to forget is really the primary focus is on vertical. And the way Paul lays it out by the Holy Spirit is that he always puts emphasis on the horizontal or the vertical. And then what comes next? The horizontal. Right? And he's telling, he's not commanding you. He's saying what the Holy Spirit will do to lead you. Right? So we're going to look at that. All right? And we, of course, got more scriptures because your pastor doesn't always has a super abundance of scripture because grace is always in a super abundance. And that's how we roll, right? So we're going to read. It says, he starts out, if then you have been raised with Christ. So the first thing he says about was what? Your position. It's getting you focused on what? Vertical. It's always going to be emphasis on your birth. You've been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. Aim at and seek rich and eternal treasures that are above. He ain't saying horizontal. He says, seek above. Above where Christ is. See at the right hand of God. What's see at the right hand of God? Jesus. So who's he telling you to seek out? Jesus. Because with Jesus, you have what? Everything. The treasure that you need in your life? Jesus, right? Just Jesus. That's it. Let's be, let's be real. You have, you have everything. So many people want the other stuff, right? They want the hands. They don't want the heart. And God said, that's your, that's your treasure, is God's heart. Seek that. Put your focus on this. I love it. He starts out, put your focus here, right? And set your minds and keep them set on what is above. Ah, he's putting saying, put everything on it. Put above it. Put it on it. I know like you're driving a car, you doing something that ever says, look at the world, right? Well, guess what? God says, look at me. Look at Jesus. Don't look at the road, look at Jesus. You will get to where you're going, right? And what, uh, I'm going to be real with you. In reality, you're going to realize you're actually sitting in the passenger seat and he's in the driver's seat. All right. You may think that you're in the driver's seat. In reality, you're not. Remember how last week we talked about glory, you get glory and honor to God, right? Because once you fail at, realize this marriage you have, right, you get glory and honor to God. Well, guess what? When you're in Christ, God crowns you with glory and honor. Oh, uh, what are we doing? We're just, he's actually give us something to give <laughs> to him, which is kind of funny. Then it's all of him. Ah, the whole Bible is like that, right? All right, so set your minds on them, right? Not things to earth. For as far as this world is concerned, you have died. You did. It's weird. You did. And your new life is hidden and with Christ in God. You're in Christ, baby. You're dead. You're hidden in Christ. Guess what? Devil can't find you. And you know what? To be real, let's be real with this. Ready for this? When you know that you're hidden in Christ, when you understand this, you start to walk it out. And who does the devil see? Christ. Why did he come against you so much? When you take, when you, when he said, God says, go right, and you go right, he's right there in your face, right? He's like, ah, this, this, Jesus, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, you're not back here. I can't let you back, right? Why did he come against you? It really is not against you, it's against him. Ah, uh, he says what? I, I'll get revenge, right? Almost, it's always God says, I'll do revenge. I will take care of it. Ah, uh, because really the attack is on him. All right, so let's go. So you're hidden in Christ. He said, look at Christ. If you're hidden in Christ, if you're in Christ, all right, if you're inside this room and you're trying to look out, what do you see? You're going to see them above the wall, right? So, so if you're in Christ, and you're looking around, what do you see? Christ. Where should your focus be? Christ. You're vertical. Right? I love the pitch of the tent. All you can see is Christ. And if you're all you see is Christ, we think people from the outside are seeing Christ. Right? So you're hidden in Christ. When Christ, who's, who's our life, appears, then you also appear with him in the splendor of his glory. So, understand who you are. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Sin, we think sin only affects us. I can tell you right now, it affects all your horizontal. 
You lie, it affects the person you lie to. Actually, it has a trickle effect because it may hurt them, they may hurt somebody else, right? You commit adultery, you don't just hurt yourself, you hurt your spouse. Or if you're not married, then you, whoever you had an had affair with or fornicate with, you hurt them, right? No matter what type of sin it is, even if it's failed to believe, you hurt somebody else around you. You hurt your horizontal. Say, you see how the Holy Spirit so much time said, you're hitting Christ. And guess what he says next? So kill the evil desires lurking in your memories, those animal impulses and all that is earthly in, your, in you that is employed in saying, talk about your flesh, all right, spirit, talk about flesh. Because who you really are is our main perfect, right? All right? Sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, unholy desires, all green covetousness, for that is idolatry, right? It is on this account of these very sins that the holy anger of God is ever going to come upon the sons of disobedience. Not you. Sons of disobedience. Word is here, disobedience means unbelief, unbelieving. Means people who don't believe in Jesus. So it's not against you, church, before you said they go out and tell everybody, you adulterer, he's coming against you. No. They believe in Christ, he ain't coming for them. All right? Let's be real. Context is king. Among whom you also once walk. Past tense. God, you no longer walking like that. All right? When you were living and addicted to such practices, right? But now, put away, rid yourselves, plea of these things. Anger, rage, bad feelings, tore other, curses, slander, foul mouth, abuse, and shameful utterance from your lips. Do not lie to one another for what you have stripped off the old unjust self with its evil practices. And you have clothed. So we always, how many people, how many people have you seen in your lives say, I gotta kill my flesh this morning. I gotta kill it. I'm like, so how, tell me how you doing that? Are you, are you sticking your flesh, your physical flesh with a knife and stuff? I mean, just, just tell me how you're doing it. I'm trying to be it down, speaking over it. Actually, if you understand what he's saying here, he's saying, renew your mind to it. Your flesh has already been crucified with Christ on the cross. You have, you have put, you have closed your. Clothe yourselves with the new self. He says, I want you to remind yourself of who you really are. Not who you once were. Put yourself out in the new, right? So he's saying, this sin that which affects your horizontal, the way around it, is focus on who you are. How are you going to find out who you are? By focusing on who Jesus is. Because as he is, so are you right now in this world. So you need to go see Jesus. You need to study who Jesus is and you need to find yourself. Because if you're hidden in him, your identity is in him. Not in who you are in the flesh. So he's already trying to set you up to have good horizontal relationships. Right? So with his evil practice, or you can close yourself, which is ever process of being renewed and remolded into fuller, more perfect knowledge. Listen to this. In the perfect knowledge, knowledge, when we said knowledge, knowledge is king. And all you're getting, get, understanding, or aka knowledge of what? Knowledge after the image of him who created it. Who's he talking about? Jesus. Get to know your savior. He said, you want, you want, you want this stuff to be gone in your horizontal? Get to know your savior. Is it? Paul says, just get to know your Savior. We make it seem like it's a step-by-step -step process. You got to love more. You got to give more. You got to do this. You got to get that. Now, that stuff is what? It is important. But it all has an ignition switch by what? Knowing your Savior and getting to know him daily. Say, wake up in the morning, and I can tell you right now, if you tell me you, you don't have it, you're a liar. And inside of you says, I want to know you more today. It does. It's in there. Because God's writing on your heart. I want to get to know Jesus more for that. He's writing on your heart. Now, how many of us actually answer it? That's the question, right? But every day, you say, God, I want to know you more. Give me more of Jesus today. I want to know what I knew yesterday. I want you to take it deeper. If it's just one little layer up, I want to know it. If you take it like 20 layers, that'd be awesome too, right? But if it's just one layer, I want to know more. That's 
your key to putting off the flesh in your life. Just get to know him. Not trying to, I'm not going to sin today, I'm not going to sin today, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to look at women today, I'm not going to look at women, oh my God, oh my God, right? That's how we play this little game, don't we? We're trying so hard to get our horizontal straight, and he says, stop. Just stop. Get to know your Savior. And the horizontal what? Will be a byproduct or a fruit. Right? But Paul keeps going. And I love this. In this new creation, all these things have vanished. So I can tell you right now, what do we have a problem with today? Racism. Racist, right? The whole poverty line and you know wealth and everything. Um, just different type stuff, right? That's an issue, of, that's our horizontal issues, right? You want to talk about issues today? You want to know the cure? Jesus. In this new creation, all this things has vanished. There is no room for it. There can neither be, can be neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor circumcised, nor difference between nations where are alien, barbarians, or Syrians, or most, most savage of all, nor slave or free men, but Christ is all. And all, everything and everywhere to all men, without the distinction of a person. You want to know your solution to, to racism? Everybody get their eyes on Jesus. Because you know what happens? You start seeing people through his eyes. Period. You want to have, sitting here between different things, all these different things, poverty and wealth. I know they all say the 99%. We hate the 1%. The 1% says, I hate the 99. Go look at Jesus. And you'll be like, I love the 99. I love the one. There is no 99. There is no one. It's all Christ. I see my brothers and sisters. So if you want to go out there and say, we need to stop this. How about you sit there and just preach the gospel and have everybody turn to look at Jesus? Because we're so much trying to focus so hard on this horizontal, it fails miserably every time. And I'm sorry, the government always tries to fix it in these new different things and all this stuff. It fails every time. He so says the solution is looking at him. It's seeing him. It keeps going. Yes, I got a lot of energy tonight. Y'all in for it now. Clothe yourselves, therefore. How you clothe? Renewal. When you renew, you're walking in who you really are. You can never know, you can never, ever walk in who you are in Christ until you renew your mind to who you are. Like we like to tell women, value yourself. Know your worth. You won't be picking these men anymore, right? And that woman actually starts to know who she is. She starts to raise her level up. And she stops dating guys who she used to date. Yet yeah, we tell Kristen, nope, don't know your worth. Stop doing it. No, we should be telling us, once you, know, once you know who your Savior is, you'll know who you are. And then you can walk in who you are. Right? As God's own chosen ones. And do you know you're God's chosen one? Do you? Well, now you know. You're God's chosen one. If you haven't heard before, tonight's the night that you're going to hear it. God's chosen one. I'm going to keep saying it. God's chosen one. Say it, church. God's chosen one. You wake up in the morning and say, I'm God's chosen one. And don't be prideful when you say <laughs> Who are purified and holy and well beloved by God Himself. I love the Himself. The Bible is so full of them. When Jesus is around, man, it's always Himself. Jesus Himself. Jesus Himself. God Himself. It's so personal. Uh, God wants to have a personal relationship with you. But look, you're purified. Do you know you're purified? How are you ever supposed to walk in purification if you don't know you are purified? How are you ever supposed to walk in holiness if you didn't know you were already made holy? Be you holy for I am holy. Where you look at, look at him holy, and then you can walk out that you're already holy, right? As he is, so am I right now in this world. It's my favorite scripture in the whole wide world. If somebody put my birthday care, I'd be happy, right? Thank you so much. Hint for yourself, right? But God himself, by point on behavior, marked by a tender heart, pity, mercy, kind feeling, a lowly opinion of yourselves and gentle ways and patience, which is tireless and long-suffering and has the power to do whatever comes in good temper. Notice that when you start putting on this stuff, you start looking at Jesus and who you are, your horizontal now starts to look great. Imagine how much better friend you start to become. How much better spouse you are. How much a better son or daughter you become. Or, and, and a mother and father. Grandparent, grandma. We can keep going. We, we can add the great greats into there too. You know who you are. You can leave with your own stuff. 
but knows how it starts to come out. Sharing with one another. And if, if one has a difference against another, readily pardoning each other. Readily. That means be ready. Be, be ready. Be ready to always what? Forgive. Be ready to always forgive. You should be ready because you know why? You want to know why? That somebody's going to fail you. You wake up in the morning, someone's going to fail you today. Just be real. They're going to fail you. He says, be ready for that. But I want your focus to be what? As the Lord has freely forgiven you, so you must forgive. You will forgive too. You focus on how much you've forgiven by him. So now, it comes from focus on that that you ain't forgiven here. You're always ready to forgive. You're always going to say, I love you. I forgive you. And all the time, you're looking up here. It's funny how that starts to impact your horizontal. Let's keep going. And above all these, see how he put it? Above all of these, put on love. And enfold yourselves with the bond perfectedness, which binds everything together to put you in ideal harmony. Notice that you're like, well, he didn't say about the love of Christ for you. Um, if he has forgiven you, he has what? Loved you. If he has made you God's chosen one and made you holy and purified and, and put you in Christ and hidden your life in Christ, is that not love? Do you need love spelled out for you? It's called Jesus Christ, right? That all speaks of his love. So he says, you see God's love and what he has done for you. Therefore, above all things, put on love. Ah, some people always got to see, they have to have the word there. It's written there. It's like the Holy Spirit to show you, right? Action. His love is not just a word. It is an action. Right? And for yourself with, bond, with the bond perfectiveness, right? And let the peace, I love this, peace from Christ's rule in your hearts. Let this peace rule in your heart. So if you're focused on all of this, this is the peace of God, right? All of this. When he talks about what he's done for you and what, who you are, that's peace or wholeness. Let this wholeness rule in your heart. In your heart. Society and settling with finality of all questions. They arise in your mind. What goes into your mind, people? When your horizontal starts to get a little shaky, who comes a-knocking? The devil. To, to really screw up this vertical. To get you focused on yourself and on your mistakes. So this horizontal starts to crumble and crash, right? Because if that, if that horizontal crumbles and crash, you know we're seeing Jesus. He says, I want you to focus in on this peace, this wholeness you have from God. So that when that time comes, he comes a knocking, you can say, I mean, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now. I am forgiven by God. God loves me. And you set your mind to it. Set your heart, your, your soul heart to it, right? All questions in the state. To which, as members of Christ, one body, you are also called to live and be thankful, giving praise to God always. When you let this, this peace in there, guess what happens? He's focusing on this peace. Thankfulness flows out. And when you're thankful, people are affected around you. Notice how this Thanksgiving is now what? A fruit of what you're focusing on with God. It comes outwardly. Let the words spoken by Christ have its home in your hearts and minds well in, in, in you in all its richness. Now, notice that. First, you're focused on what? Christ, what he said, right? What he's speaking to you, right? Notice what comes next. The horizontal out. You're focused on this and what comes out as you teach and allow us and train one another. And in, in, in all his intelligence and wisdom, and in spiritual things, as you sing psalms to him, spiritual songs, make a melody to God with his grace in your hearts. Sing, church, as you focus in on him. 
as you focus in this love which spills out his mouth to your heart, you then what? Respond outwardly with singing praise. And that's what teaching and giving insight and all intelligence and wisdom to who is around you. That now horizontal is being effective as you focus in what he's saying to you. I think it's so beautiful. So, I don't know. I, I find it to be so lovely because we, we can look at this and be like, well, this is what you need to be doing, church. And instead, God, Paul, by the Holy Spirit, is putting your focus on the Him. He says, this is what's going to flow out of you. He's really telling them what your fruit is going to look like. And that kind of tells you where your focus is at. If this is not happening, your focus is on the wrong area. Because I know what I can tell you right now. God says put faith in what area? You're right standing with him, right? In Christ. Because if you put all your faith in all these different areas, it becomes what? Weak, right? Put your faith in one area and everything flows out, right? Well, if you have your focus in all these different areas, what happens? It becomes what? Weak. Something's going to suffer big time, right? So he says put your focus where? On him. And everything's affected. Right? And whatever you do, no matter what is in the word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Notice, what are you doing? It's in his name. Where's your focus then? If it's in his name, where's your focus? Jesus. Ah, and it depends upon his person. If you depend upon somebody, let me ask you this. If you are dependent on somebody to walk, you need, some, you need to help walk out of the chair to get to the back. Your focus is kind of on that person, right? Just be real, because if they mess up, you're hitting the ground, right? I've been down that road, and it ain't pretty, right? I actually had somebody who just let me go, and I hit the ground pretty hard. Had more injury done to me than I had before, right? But your focus is on that person, because, man, they got your life in their hands, right? So as we depend on him, our focus is on him. Giving praise to God, Father, through him. Guess what comes out next? Praise. What does praise do? It affects your horizontal. People around you, they're like, how in the world are you praising God through what you're going through right now? Why not? Look how beautiful and wonderful he is. I'm dependent on him. Why can't I not praise? People are affected by it. They start to what? They start to see Jesus in you. Or seeing you hidden in him. Alright? Notice what comes next. Ah, he's now going to talk about our marriage relationships, right? He said, be your focus on him. Notice what happens. Wives, be subject to your husbands, subordinate and adapt yourselves to them. Or, let's put in different terms, respect their husband. Let's make it easy. You know, people are keeping going around and it's me. You're her slave and stuff. No, you respect your husband. And it's right and fitting and proper duty in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Be affectionate and sympathetic with them and do... Do not be harsh or bitter or resentful toward him. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is praise pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke or irritate or fret your children. Do not be hard on them or harass them, lest they become discouraged and sullen and remorse and feel in fear and, and frustrated. Do not break their spirit. Now, I want you to notice one thing here. It never says anything about mothers. Mothers are just so naturally <laughs> nurturing. Why? I think God already knew what was going to happen. Fathers are going to start leaving their family. Fathers have tend to be more hard on their kids than mothers are. Mm. He never says anything about mothers. But notice, this right here, this horizontal, only comes after what? Staring at your birth. Wives can submit to their husband as they see how much God you're like, I'll, I'll respect my husband. I'll, he may not be doing right. I'll still respect him. And what does that do? Pulls back your husband. Remember how in Peter he says, Wives, don't worry about the makeup. Don't worry about the fancy clothes. Don't worry about the jewelry. That's not going to win your husband back. It's being respectful to him. Allowing what's in you to come out. As you focus on him, it comes out to your husband. And it pulls him back. Ain't your good looks going to bring him back. It's going to be in Christ that's in you that's going to pull him back. Right? And that only comes out by staring at him. Husband, you can love your wife. You can agape your wife as you see how Jesus agape the church. 
and your focus is still on him. Children, now this is a little hard to understand, but when they come to the age that they can start to understand, as they look at Christ and see his beautiness, they'll be what? More happy to submit to their parents still, right? Even if their parents are telling them the wrong thing, they can still submit and realize they love, they, they, what? they honor their parents no matter what, as they see him. Notice that they're doing what? They're fulfilling the law, but also go beyond it. Right? Fathers. To be a great father is to look at Jesus. And you don't provoke your kids or irritate your children. You don't push them off to the side. You, you actually bring them up to seeing Jesus. Right? You guide them in seeing that. You're the spiritual leader and you bring them to that point. It's all on there after he says, focus in on your Jesus. We always miss this part because we will just preach this part. But context is king, right? Context is king. Keeps going. Servants. Now, I can tell you right now, the Bible just says no bad about, does not say that you should not be servants, should not be slaves or anything like that. He says, but if you're stuck in that situation, I got a solution for you. He's still saying, talking about what? Look at Jesus. If you get stuck in this situation, you look at Jesus. Right? You got to look at Jesus, right? Actually, you can give yourself life and the life to the master who's controlling you or owns you, things like that. You can actually win them to Christ and maybe earn your physical freedom as well, right? Servants, obey everything. Those who are your earthly masters do not, not only when their eyes are on your are are on you as the pleases of men, but in simplicity of purpose is with your all your heart, because you are reverence for the Lord and your sincere expression and devotion to Him. Looking at Him, you can win your masters, and it shows to them that you know who your real master is, or your real Lord is. It's God Himself, Jesus Himself. Whatever you may, may be your task, work at it heartily as something done for the Lord and not for men. Now, we're like, I need, to make, I need to please my boss. I need to please my boss. No, you should be looking at Jesus and say, I want this to look like your, something that is from your hand. Now, you're like, well, how's that going to please my boss? You don't think if Jesus knows your boss's heart, he knows it better than you do. He knows that person better than you do. He knows exactly what that person likes and dislikes and knows everything about it. Even so much they can touch that button inside them make them what? Can make them weep at an instant, right? You're not doing it for them. You're doing it for him. Notice that this vertical in a way, when you're focusing on the vertical, this horizontal, it's really for him. It's not for them, but for him. You actually express out your love for God through the horizontal by focusing on the vertical. It's, it's kind of hard to understand, but it is so true. You focus on what's the vertical, this comes out, and it shows that you actually love God. All right? It says, Knowing with all certain that it is from the Lord and not from men, that you will receive the inheritance which is yours, your real reward. All right? It's not what you get here, it's what you get there. All right? The one whom you actually serve, serve me is the Lord. Ah, I think this is funny. What you're really doing, if people want to say the servant, I need to serve you, God. Well, God, how you want me to serve you today, right? Mm -mm. Servanthood is serving you. And as you focus in, you don't mind putting a servant towel on and washing some people's feet. He focuses on him. That's why Jesus said to Peter, you got to let me wash your feet if you want to be part of me. Because this represents me. Because I'm forever your servant. Because I bear, I have my ear pierced, or my ears pierced. I'm forever serving you. And that is represented through how you serve one another. Not beat one another, but serve one another. Right? For he who deals wrongfully will reap the fruit of his folly and he'll be punished for his wrongdoing. And with God there is no partiality in my way. Position may be whether he is a slave or the master. It says for him. 
knows this whole time. He's, I, I love this chapter because it's talking about your horizontal. But we like to pull the horizontal parts out and, and preach that and say, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to be doing. This is what you need to be doing. And we're out of the Holy Spirit and saying, it's funny how you focus in on this, how this becomes this. And how you focus on this, and that this is how this becomes. How it starts to become your fruit out of your body. Your vertical always affects your horizontal. Now, I've been saying this part here, and I said the last couple weeks, and I'm actually going to read it so you can actually see it now, what I was talking about. But it's so amazing how we get caught up in so much of Jesus, how the horizontal is just so affected so much, and how it just blossoms, and it comes so fruitful. I keep missing the word fruit because we're going to go somewhere with this. All right? But how it's so fruitful. So, let's go to what Jesus was saying and Matthew, I've been talking about this grateful day, this awesome, beautiful day. Why are you scared, church? This is a glorious day. Our Jesus will be with us forever. He's here, but he, we physically get to touch him. We get to be held by him. I don't know about you, I want to feel the, the, the scars. I want to feel the, the nail prints. I want to feel the side. I want to feel him holding me and squeezing me and not letting me go. So why are we scared, church? This is a lovely day, right? Beautiful day. Don't be scared. I don't be scared about it. But we're going to read about this, right? So we're going to jump down to 34. It says, when, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his, his glory, and all nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from the people, for one another, as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. And he will cause the sheep to stand at his right hand, but the goats at his left. Alright? Righteousness, wrath. Alright? Punishment, right? Righteousness, punishment. So everybody wants to betray that this thief on the cross was at Jesus' left hand. Everything tells me he's probably was at his right hand. And the one who ridiculed him was at his left hand. Because one says, help me. One says, I don't need you. Right? It's almost, and it, the Bible never says, the gospel never says, but everything points to that way, right? Right hand, left hand. So he said that the sheep and goats. He will cause the sheep to stand his right hand in the hand. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you bless of my father. You are you favor of God point to eternal salvation. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I love that. Before the foundation of the world. He's already got to take care of. You think your need somehow God forgot? Nah, he never misses anything, right? He's God. If he missed it, he ain't God. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you brought me together with yourselves and welcomed and entertained me and lodged me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me with, with health and nursing care. I was in prison and you came to see me. Now, this is what? This is horizontal, isn't it? This is all horizontal. Now, I, 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 I think it's, this is funny how the church has taken it and said, we need to go to the hospital. We need to go do this. We got to, he said, we got to be there, right? We got to go into the prisons because he says, we got to go visit people in prison. We got to go visit people in the hospital. We got to have this. We got to have this, right? Notice what we're focused on doing. We're focused on the horizontal. We act like that, right? Now, I want you to, I, I really want us to notice the next part because this, when God's showing this, I became speechless. I started to cry. I almost missed my chair when I went backwards because my knees gave out because I just thought it was so beautiful. And I'm sitting here, and in my mind, it's like, how can we do that when I'm kind of conscious of my horizontal here? But some things is just left for it to happen, right? He says, then the just and the upright, or the righteous, let's be real, is righteous. We'll answer him. Church, we will answer him. Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome and entertain you or naked and clothe you? When? He 
we say, we're, we're, we're asking the question, when did we do this, God? We do this. You know what? It's so funny is that if you look in the Greek, it makes us oblivious to what our actions were doing. We were what? The church is focused on what? Him. On this great day, we were like, God, we were so consumed with you that we didn't even what, realize that we were even doing those. But yet, we church try to spend so much time now and try to focus on the doing. If you want to feed the sheep, pastors, leaders, you need to feed them Jesus. And in that, the horizontal comes out. Yeah, there's stuff we've done together as a church, but also when as we're individual believers, the horizontal will flow out. And it won't be something we're even conscious of. It just happens. It becomes your first nature. It just comes out. I, to me, it's like, I, I basically, you know, hey, I, I tell my wife I love her. You know, I'm conscious now, but it's like, we're not even conscious of it. It's just like Jesus, man. When? And notice that this also too in the Greek is we all say it at one accord. <clears throat> Church, we're meant to be united, not divided. When? Jesus, man, I, you know, I, I sat there and, you know, I was so consumed with you, I didn't realize I was doing that. I mean, I didn't realize that, that I was in the hospital, really. I didn't realize that, you know, I was helping and you know, giving the food to somebody who was hungry. I didn't realize I was actually just doing that. And I like his, I, lo I love Jesus' response was what? When do we, and when do we see you sick or in per prison and came to visit him? The king replied with him, truly I tell you, and so far as you did it for one of the least in the estimation of men of these moments, you did it for me. How that hor that vertical affects so much of our horizontal relationships. It flows. Our horizontal can be seen in the horizontal. When 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 James talked about faith without works is dead. He's talking about your horizontal, your vertical being seen in your horizontal. That's what he's talking about. Exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, you might be saved, but. You're not, you're not taking advantage of your relationship here on earth, and it's not being seen. It's time to be seen, right? You know what's so funny? If you keep reading, I encourage you to read the next part. He said, to the, next, to the goats, you didn't do any of these. And they said what? When did we not do these? What were they focused on? They're doing. Man, what a horrible life. Be so focused on your doing, and you miss it the whole entire time. Sad. You know what's so funny about that? I was talking to my wife the, the, earlier before we started the service, and I, I said, "You know, we so focused on we we got to save people from God's wrath, right? How about save somebody from from a life of never feeling that they're loved? Just picture your life never feeling that you were loved. How about we go out and try to save people from a life?" You know, I think I think that's more personal. I think that's more heartfelt, and I think that's where our focus needs to be. I think that drives the compassion out of us more so than saying we just got saved from God's wrath, and that makes it seem like God is mad at us instead of saying that He loves us. I want you to feel love in your life. Our horizontal, our vertical affects our horizontal so much. Now I've been talking about fruit. The horizontal is the fruit, right, of what our vertical is. We're going to talk about, oh, we're going to talk about fruit in a second. I forgot that slide. But notice this in John 13, 34, 35, when he says, when Jesus said, I give you a new command that you should love one another. Now, that's the part we always stop as pastors and leaders and as individual leaders. And we go out and try to evangelize. You just got to love one another, people. That's what we do, right? You just got to love them. You just got to love them. Wife, you need to love your husband. Husband, you need to love your wife. And we just kind of throw that out there, and they're kind of like, uh, I've been trying to. That's why I'm here. Right? No. 
The emphasis is on where? Just as I have loved you. So you too should love one another. Ah, where's the focus at? On him. What flows out? Loving one another. Notice this. By this shall all men that you know that you're my disciples, or you're my wife. Let's put in terms now about what out of the cross. You are my wife. If you love one another, if you spend church, we spend our time focusing on him, our love for one another will grow. And that people will know that we are his church, that we are Christ's, that we are God's beloved children whom he loves so very much. And we are saying, come into this love with us. And we have that invitation rich stamped all over our face, not this one that says, I don't like you because you sin." That's what they're seeing right now, because we're trying to do everything in our own ability, our own strength. And we fall miserably every time. You know, it's so funny, and when you read Romans 3, it says that, that Israel, that when you, by you trying to fulfill the law, or you're, just put in plain terms, you trying to do things on your own, you make God look bad. He says that. You make God look bad. You misrepresent who God is to everybody around you. If we just focus on him and allow his love to flow out of us, we represent him. He says, that's how you represent me. That's how they know that I'm yours and that you're in me. Right? Now, I'm missing that fruit and we're going to get to that part now. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now it says, the fruit. Singular. I love the analogy. I, 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 God showed me. He goes, this fruit can be summed up in one word, and it's the first one, love, but it has nine different flavors. Like a Jolly Rancher, it has nine different flavors, right? But it's still a what? Jolly Rancher, right? So, it's this fruit of the Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. This fruit ain't for you. We always try to put this on it. The gift, God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not for you. It's for the church. Oh, for oh what? Horizontal. So this fruit is what? Horizontal. Now we're like, well, I need love, well, I need to be at peace, I need to have patience, I need to have all this. And yeah. Nah. How does, the whole, how does the fruit of the Holy Spirit come out? When you focus in on what? Jesus. You're right standing in God. You're looking at Jesus and say, that's my righteousness, baby. And you're focusing on him. What comes out? Fruit. Because you can look at this. Before this, he talks about the works of the flesh, right? It's not pretty. It ain't glorious. It ain't great, right? It ain't. He says, but that's in your doing. That's what you look like. And you're doing that, which is kind of funny. I should put that on there. That's what we look like when we try to put our focus on a horizontal. That's what it looks like to everybody else. And when we take our focus on Jesus, this is what it looks like. The work, how this? With the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes. Now, he's accomplished it. You're not. Let's be real. Let's, put the, let's give the credit where the credit is due. God. It's love. I told you. It's one fruit with different flavors. So you can sum all this up into one word. Agape. Joy. I can tell you right now, joy ain't for you. It's for the people who are around you. Peace ain't much for you. It's for them. It says it's coming out. What's the saying? You're blessed to be what? A blessing. Patience, even temper. Believe me, or I should say enduring. Endurance is probably a better term because everybody's like, patient. I, I, yeah, I'm very patient today. You're not even saying the word right, but it's endurance, even kilt. Kindness. Is kindness for you? I can be kind. Is that really for me? It's for who? People around me, my horizontal. Goodness. Not for me. For them. Faithfulness. Ah, that's a good one. We ain't very faithful to one another, are we? But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is faithfulness. It's for our horizontal. Gentleness. Now that's a big one. I don't see that much in church. Much. 
much lately anyways. Self-control. Hmm. Because if you have self-control, you're not taking from everybody else. And we think, oh, that you're stealing something or something. Nah, let's, let's take it deeper. Let's take it deeper. You're not trying to take their joy. You're not trying to take their happiness. You're not trying to take whatever it may be they have. You're not trying to take it for yourself. You have what? Self-control. So what are you doing? You're benefiting them. And get such thing, there is no law that can bring a charge. I love that. The law cannot help you in this. And soon as we figure that out, the better off we are, right? And those who belong to Christ Jesus have... Yeah, that's why I put this here. Have crucified the flesh. So, you know, if you're trying to crucify your flesh every day, realize there's already crucified. And that's what Paul was trying to do. With, with its passions and appetites and desires. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If we are saved by grace, let us walk by grace grace. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. Ain't no way you can have your, your, your conduct controlled by the Spirit if you don't have your eyes on Him. Because He says, if you behold me, you will be transformed to my image outwardly. Mm. Let us not become vainglorious and self conceited and competitive and challenged and provoking Irritating to one another, envying and being jealous of one another. Oh, that was horizontal. Where was the focus? Vertical. Well, guess what comes out horizontal? We're not vainglorious. We're not self conceited We're not competitive in the sense of competitive in the wrong way. Challenging, provoking, and irritating to one another. And being jealous of one another. Notice that when somebody's joyful, you're joyful with them. When they're sad, you're sad with them. Notice that you start to what? Pick one another up instead of trying to beat one another in the head for who they are, right? For what's going on. That your vertical always will impact your horizontal. I don't care how you put it, and don't care how you try to say it, your vertical will always be seen in your horizontal. If I see somebody who's not very faithful to their friends, they're not very faithful to God in those sense. That doesn't mean that God is not faithful to them, no. But God wants you to be faithful to them. Because if you're being faithful to them, then you're being faithful to him. If you're loving them, then you're being loving to him. If you are patient with them or enduring with them, you're enduring with him. If you're all these different things to them, you're enduring is to him, right? All these fruits are to him. I love it. I absolutely love it. God's amazing how this works. And I know we it's so easy as to put in there like I'm a bad friend. I want you to say, Jesus, I need help. See me as my friend. I want you to see, I want to see you as my friend. And and he will, what? We think that God is always like, nope, I'm not going to show you that, right? No, he's like, heck yeah, I'm going to show you how I'm your friend, right? He goes, I need to be a better husband. Jesus, show me how you're my husband. He goes, oh man, I'm so happy you could ask me, man. Here I am, right? We think God's so trying to hold back. He's trying to say, I'm going to show you who I am. I am what I am. Here I am. I am the great I am. I am whatever I need. you need me to be. Here I am. What do you need me to be today? I'm already that. Let me show you that. Let me show you the side of that. He, he ain't holding it back. So church, you need help in the area. Say, God, show me you in this area. Show me how you are towards me. And then guess what? You'll start being to everybody else. It comes out. You know what? And if we're sitting there holding our mask to the people, we're holding our mask to God. It's time to take our mask off, church. It's time to start to dive into our relationship with God. Because you know what's so funny is if we get deeper with Him, what do we start getting to do? We start being deeper with our friendships and marriages and parent parental relationships, right? I finally came to thank you, Jesus. We start going deeper into those. We don't just say, you know, how you doing today? Great. You know, Jesus is great too. Yep, yep, yep. We start saying, man, I know you had a rough week. You want to talk about it? You know, how, Tim, I love how you say, how did you get to where you're at today? How did you meet? How did you do it? We start to ask those questions. 
Not because we're sitting there trying to be, quote unquote, polite, because we actually care. Because we're getting deeper with him, and we start getting deeper here. We start receiving his love, we start loving here. We start being great friends here. We start seeing him as great friends, we start being great friends here. We start seeing him as a husband, we start being a husband here. A wife, yes, he has a very nurturing side to God. He wants you to see that he'll be, you'll be here too. Everything you need, you start here, and it flows out here. Whatever you need here, you need to look here. It needs to flow out. I say, you know, it's so funny that water flows downhill. Oh, well, guess what? Everything you need in your horizontal always has to come from the vertical out. Always, always, always. And actually, it's already here. It only comes out when you're focused here. Right? He says, I work out your salvation. Right? Uh, he goes, but, 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 but. We always leave that, that part there. For one, it's already in you. It needs to come out. He says, but he gives you the will desired and then the power to see it happen, right? How, what, how's that? He turns, helps you turn to him. He wants you to see him. The answer is Jesus. Period. I don't care what you have to say. I'm convinced, totally convinced, by the grace of God, it is Jesus. And I pray that you become totally convinced in your life the answer that you need for your problem is Jesus. And we start seeing that, man. We become a church that's so powerful, and we become a church that's one, on one accord. All right? And we start flying, and we start, I start flying, yeah, we start flying real high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where people are coming towards us and coming towards us. They, they're like, I've never seen a church like this. Uh, yeah, uh, I, here's my mind, man. You know what? I need help. I'm coming to you. I need help. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to the church. People run into the church. I picture it like, you know, it's like a marathon. The gate, the gun goes off, and everybody's running towards the church instead of trying to run away. Why? Because they know they're going to be embraced. They know they're going to be loved. They're going to be taken care of. Whatever they need is going to be there. Why? Because Jesus is here. Because the body, the church is the body. Right. So let's focus in. Let's take our time every day, all day. If you have to start out, chunk, start out in small chunks. Believe me, he wants, gives you the desire to see him. You've been looking your whole life until the point that you got, you saw Jesus, and you said he's my savior, and you got saved. That desire never left. It grows more and more and more to see him. Because if we're not church to willing to see him, then what's the point being? Alright? So let's see him every day. And let's watch our relationships horizontally be affected, impacted in a way. And guess what happens? You be changing up the community or communities with the love of Christ. So let's pray, church. Father, we thank you so much for your love that you have for us. Thank you so much that you have given us Jesus. We thank you so much for Jesus. Can I repeat that enough? That we are so thankful for him, Father. That you have given us your best. You've given yourself to us. And we thank you so much. I pray that as a church, as a whole, that we become so focused in on Jesus there. That we are so consumed with him. We know that at that point, that our horizontal will be impacted in a huge way. That we become a blessing to the ones around us. That we start to bleed out Jesus for the world to see. We become that free, sweet fragrance to them in their nostrils too. And we thank you so much for that, Father. So I pray that if anybody's struggling with that, Father, I bind it down in the name of Jesus because the devil's trying to come against them. We squash them down. We take them out of the way. Father, we allow them to come freely into knowing who Jesus is right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, so much for that in Jesus' name. Amen.